Okay, so let's take a look at how we could look at doing question number 10, which is a, uh, our, our statistical question about um, how do we find the boundaries for um, this equation. Um, P is bounded by between 8.8 .8 and some number W, and then we have a, um, a variable R which is what's creating a distribution around those two points. So let's just break this down and draw a picture so that we kind of understand this. So the first thing we do is we need to look at what values here are given. So we, we're told we have a mean of 7. Okay, so that means mu is equal to 7. So I'm going to write that down. We have a standard deviation of 1.5. Okay, so our sigma value okay, is 1.5. And then we have this equation here where we're looking to find what is the limit here for w okay and we know that between these two values 8.8 .8 and this other value w um, we have a probability <coughs> or coverage here which is equal to 0.8 okay or that's actually also eight percent okay so let's just draw a picture so we kind of understand that here so i'm going to start by drawing a a curve. Okay, so we're going to draw our standard normal curve. Okay, and then right away we can label a few things with this. So the middle of the curve, where the peak is the highest, is equal to our mean. Okay, so we know that's equal to 7. So I'm just going to write that down as mu here, and I'm just going to put the number 7. And then we know that either side of this curve, one standard deviation, so I'm just going to put one tick here, and one tick to the left and to the right, we know we are going to add 1.5 to the mean. So um, we can say that this is uh, plus one standard deviation, sigma, and then this is minus one standard deviation. But let's put, put some actual numbers in here. So one standard deviation to the right is going to be 7 plus 1.5. So that's going to give us 8.5 as the value this tick right here. And then if we were to do the other side, it's going to be 7 minus 1.5, which is going to be giving us 5.5. Now what we're being told here is we sort of have to break this down. We're looking for the area under the curve, which is equal to 8% between two values. So where is 8.8 .8 going to be? Well, 8.8 .8 is going to be outside of one standard deviation. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere a little past 8.5. Okay, we don't know exactly where it is, but just for our sketch here, I'm just going to put in a dashed line okay, right here, and then I'm going to draw it up like this. Okay, so this area, so everything to the left of this area um, is the boundary here for this value, 8.8. .8. Okay, and then we're looking to find out some value w. So again, we don't know where it is, but we know it's going to be past 8.8. .8. So I'm just going to put in another line here. And we're looking to find this value here, w. Okay, and the area that this, these two boundaries capture on the standard curve, this is equal to 0 0.08, okay, or can just simply say it's 8%. Okay, so just this little fraction here that I'm going to shade in two ways from 8.8 .8 to W is equal to 8%. All right, so, so that's visually what we're looking at trying to do here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to come up with sort of a procedure of how we're going to end up calculating W and, and what these numbers mean. Okay, so the first thing is if we just took the first part of this equation, okay, and then we said, what is the value of the probability, um, under, which is the area under the curve, of just up to the value of 8.8? .8. Okay, so what is that equal in terms of the probability? So let me just change the color here so that you can kind of see what this is. Um, Anything to the left of 8.8 .8 is going to be our probability value. So that means, I'm just going to kind of shade this one in right here. So everything to the left of 8.8 .8 is going to give, is, is going to be our percentage of how much um, it, it, this, this covers under the standard normal curve. Okay, so remember, 
zero, uh, the curve works from left to right. So the numbers get very, very small to the end here, and they're supposed to go to infinity. So it's like negative infinity, and then they go to positive infinity onto the right side. So we're going to be capturing, okay, a very big significant chunk of this curve. Okay, because we're covering not quite all of it, but we're covering a good substantial chunk of it. And then we know what the difference is going to, that we're going to have to add on. And then that'll take us to our boundary area for W, which our value for W is. So the first thing is, is let's calculate this value for the area under the curve um, up to 8.8. .8. So the way you have to do that is you're going to use your TI calculators function called the normal CDF. Okay, so normal CDF. And that is the function that allows us to calculate the area under the curve at a given point, okay, on the sort of on our horizontal axis. So at a given point up to 8.8, .8, this is going to give us the probability. Okay, so that's what we need. We need this normal CDF function. Okay, so it's just a matter of plugging this into our calculator to, to work it out. Okay, so it's just going to go norm CDF. Okay, and our first value is the leftmost value that is infinitely small. So this is going to be negative 1 times 10 to the 99. Okay, very, very large negative number. Okay, and then as we get close, move into the curve towards the right, we're going to be approaching 8.8. .8. So our second boundary value here is 8.8. .8. And then the two values that it takes to compute this correctly is we're going to put in the mean of 7 and the standard deviation of 1.5. So if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal number, which is going to work out to be 0.8849 to four decimal spots. But this really is our percentage. Okay, so the area that is shaded here in orange, okay, is approximately 88.5% up to that value of 8.8. .8. Okay, so that's step one. Let's go back to my uh, color here, step one. Okay, so step two, what you need to do next is we need to say, okay, I do know we, we have a coverage of 0.8849, up to point up to the value of 8.8 .8, but then I need to add this 0 0.08 okay so what's my total probability going to be up to the value of W okay so the way you can think of it is this way the probability under the curve up to the value of 8.8 .8, plus this extra little difference that we've sketched out here which is 0. 0, 0.8 is equal to the probability at this new unknown value w right here. Okay, so that's what that equation actually, that this, the way they've written that inequality, this is how it actually is going to, to turn itself out. So probability of up to add up to 8.8 .8 plus the difference 0 0.08 is going to then equal the total probability that we find at that point w. Um, on the curve. Okay, so we do know the value here of probability of 8.8. .8. It's 0 0.8849, and we know our value here is 0 0.0800. Okay, so this together is going to equal the probability value at point W. So we can say the following here. Probability at point W is the sum of those two values which is going to be giving us 0.9649. Okay, so that's how we have to conceptually think about this question. Okay, because we're looking to figure out at what point for this value, W, does the probability at W equal this, the total sum of these two areas, which in this case is 0.9649. Okay, so then we just need a third step here. We need to work backwards. How do you find W? Okay, so to find W, what you need to do is you need to use the opposite function of normal CDF. So we're going to be using the function called the inverse norm function. Okay, and what this one takes is if we know the probability that we're looking at, we can work backwards and figure out what that boundary value W is. Okay, so the statement that you can say here is W is equal 
to the inverse norm. Okay, and then the first value in this um, function takes the value of the area that we're looking at finding, which is 0.9649. Okay, and then we need to plug in the mean and then the standard deviation. And when we work that out on your TI calculator, okay, you will get a value of 9.72. So 9.72 is this missing value for W. Okay, so therefore we can say the following. The probability from 8.8 .8, okay, all the way to 9.72 is equal to 0 0.0800. So this is the missing value that we're looking at, at um, finding in this question. Okay, so this question takes a, a little bit of um, kind of work to figure out what's happening here. So you need to isolate the mean and the standard deviation. You need to draw yourself a picture of what this probability statement is actually asking for here. Okay, and there's two parts. There's the first number and then there's the second number, okay? And the way it's written is what they're asking is they're telling you what the difference of those two um, ranges is equal to, okay? And remember that the curve goes from left to right, where left is a super small number, and then the right is going to be an infinitely large number. So then, the, so the first part of this question, the probability up to 8.8 .8 is 88.5% or 0.8849, we add that to the difference, which is 0 0.08, and that gives us the probability at our unknown value, W. Okay, and then we, so we end up working backwards then using the inverse norm function in order to calculate what that missing um, value is. Okay, so you do need the, both of these functions. Norm CDF, which remember is the one that gives you the area or the probability, and inverse norm is the one where you take the probability to find the value along the, the horizontal axis. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out with this question. Um, this type of word problem shows up in a bunch of cases. Um, it can be disguised as an application problem, but it's, it essentially works out to being the same thing where you just have to draw the curve.